Rule three, make friends with people who want the best for you. People who will celebrate your victories and commiserate your defeats. And maybe I'm being too cynical here and uh, thinking that there's a problem with the moral framework of society. And maybe this person definitely did have a problem. But here we have from the BBC, I was addicted to exercise by Nicola Kelly. And when it's something that is healthy and yet still supposed to be an addiction, that you have to think, well, at what point does a healthy habit become an addiction? Uh, can it be, considering that these things uh, are based on statistic abnormalities? So they're getting in the way of your regular life. So okay, but surely if you develop new habits, if they're good habits, then you have to get rid of the bad habits. In which case, those good habits, get rid of the things that are getting in, which are your normal life. Let's say you wish to stop consuming alcohol. I think we can universally agree that that would be a, a benefit. Um, stop taking uh, other mind-altering drugs as well. Um, things like nicotine and cocaine. In that case, that's changing your, your daily life because ordinarily you would meet up with the gang in the late afternoon, early evenings, you'd get drunk, get high, um, cocaine, nicotine, whatever it might be, and just basically waste the evening not pursuing what is meaningful to you. In which case, you pursuing that, that new habit, or at the very least getting out of those bad habits, is now getting in the way of your normal life. You can no longer do that. You can no longer hang out with those people who, of course, will mock you and not want to, to, to be with you or try and make you feel bad because now you're separated from them and actually doing something worthwhile and people cannot deal with the fact that somebody else might be bettering themselves at which point they wish to shy away and try and bring down the other person too. In fact Peterson even takes it one step further where he says that people will try and bring you down to um, validate their own view of the world see well if I can bring that person down then maybe their way of doing things isn't so high and mighty after all and I'm right in, in living my, my wretched life and my, my view on existence being so terrible. But, <clears throat> this article, sure, the lady might be a bit obsessive and taking things to some extremes. And if she feels happier by stopping exercising so much, then good for her. But I wish this to be just a, an example of, of a, a broader problem than I see. And in fact, before we even go over the article, if I could, I'd like to say that at the bottom of this article, after saying that exercise addiction and then feeling bad for it and how people can stop doing it, at the end of it, at the very bottom, what has the BBC got? It's got Weekend Sorted on BBC iPlayer. You, you'll do very these shows. <laughs> and it's just a load of TV to watch instead of going out exercising. We know the benefits of exercising. In fact, Joe Rogan likens it to saying that if there was a pill that would make you feel the same way as having exercised, it would be the most popular pill in the world, and that the increase in oxygen to your brain because of the increased blood flow and increased breathing then enables you to, to think sharp, think quicker. It's got a dopaminergic response as well, which makes you feel better, and might increase your intelligence, but at the very least won't decrease it like malnutrition and stagnation will. So not exercising and then eating crap in order to give you that dopaminergic response uh, initially, which then also causes an addiction, things like sugar, is detrimental to your health. So of the options, exercise addiction isn't such a bad thing. And then of course, if you look back historically about what people were about, something like a, an exercise addiction to tribal people, I don't think they're really going to understand. In fact, they probably say, yes, well done, you're doing great, let's see if we can make a competition of this. Or, if you wish to make it more modern, why not people in the army, or martial arts, or actual athletes? At that point, yes, they will be competing with each other to see who can be the best, and they will even be competing for prize money if you're going into sport. So yes, that is very, very useful, and in some ways healthy. Yes, you have then got examples of the, the Tour de France, whereby... The cyclists who are taking steroids are healthier than those who have not due to the muscle atrophy at the end of their very long ordeal where they, they cycle about, I think it's a third of the circumference of the moon, then yes, that's understandable. But let's let's dive in then. So, the ladies, uh, Valerie Stefan is the lady in question. 
When I run, I feel like I'm achieving something. I'm getting faster, stronger. It's like a series of small victories. Fantastic. Ten years ago, Valerie began jogging to improve her fitness. Well done, Valerie. Good on you. She signed up for a five-kilometer run, followed by ten-kilometer races, then a marathon. But soon she was getting up early each morning to train and prioritizing sport above all else. <laughs> oh no, getting up early each morning to train? That must be awful. Hmm. Actually trying to, to synchronize your, your body with, uh, with sunlight as well, especially in, in, uh, in summertime, exactly as humans have been doing for hundreds of thousands of years. That must be terrible. Oh no. And then being more disciplined by, by getting up early, getting that out of the way for the day, and then getting on with your life, and then putting that discipline into other areas. Because if you train discipline or willpower in one area of life, it does spill over into other areas. And Jocko Willink, of course, uh, suggests this as well. <laughs> Get up early. Which, if you're working night shifts, getting up early might still mean 4pm in the afternoon and not 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes. So she says, I started to realise that exercise controlled me rather than me controlling exercise. That control quickly became an obsession, she says. Okay, how? It had a big impact on my work, my family, every aspect of my life. Over time, exercise became unhealthy. Maybe your work isn't right for you. Maybe your family don't have the same... Um, uh, aren't aligned with your goals and then mention friends as well maybe them too maybe if you're trying to better yourself you're going to have to move up from your current social group because they fit into where you are and if you can't pull them up don't cast pearls before swine find new friends who are more suited to where you want to be as the addiction grew Valerie became increasingly isolated from those closest to her exactly find new friends who want the best for you it damaged my relationship, she says. Some people just didn't understand or see why I had to exercise. They saw me as a bit crazy. Well, exactly. Surely those same people would also see you as a bit crazy if you thought, hmm, maybe I'm not going to drink alcohol. Or maybe, oh, I'm just going to get up earlier so I can actually get my work done and I'm not going to stay out late at night. So, oh, that's a bit crazy. It's like, yes, it's actually being productive, getting things done and living a more fulfilled life. Find new friends. Showing up late, rescheduling, cancelling became the norm. Valerie would arrange to meet... Okay, so... Late, rescheduling, cancelling became the norm. Fair enough, in which case this isn't so disciplined after all. And yes, I, I can understand where, for her, this can become perhaps obsessive. Yes, sure, as I say, this is for a wider point, not her in particular. Valerie would arrange to meet up with friends on the condition they play squash or swim together, relaxing only when she had met her physical target for the day. Brilliant, goal-oriented, wants to pursue more. Got to meet your physical target for the day. I'm sure you have other targets as well if you're a well-rounded individual. And you want to meet up with friends if you're going to then be more active. That's good. That means then that it's more likely that <laughs> you're not going to fall asleep or get bored because you are being active the whole time. And then that is beneficial for both people. <laughs> if I could say, like if I had friends that I could say, yeah, we're going to meet up, but we're, we're going to spar. We're going to go through martial arts. We're going to go through self-defense. Or we're going to play sport when we meet. That would be fantastic. And I remember way back in the school days, it was a similar thing. I'd have various different friends in different aspects or different areas because I was similarly, as I am, an obsessive person. So if it's for, for squash, they say, I'm, I'm going to go talk to people who, uh, who are on the squash team as well. Or swimming, as they say, I'm, I'm going to go talk to those people. Depending on the different racket sports, self-defense, fits athletics, whatever it might be, I'm going to talk to different people who are better than me in order to encourage me to, to better myself and try and be as good as them. Because by trying to do all those things, I'm not going to be excellent at any one thing. But I do try. They thought I didn't want to see them, she says. I did, but I had to train a lot beforehand or I'd feel very guilty. It was like a constant trade-off, which is almost the, the definition of a, a conscientious person. So, well done. Uh, just make sure your goals are realistic. How do you do that? You want to know what you're trying to earn or gain, I suppose. And she says she's an amateur athlete. Of course, if you have the, the same mentality, but you are a professional athlete, then this kind of thing would be definitely understandable and admired by people. And if you think that, hey, exercise is actually where my passion is, not at, a, at an office job, then see if you can pursue a business in, in that endeavor actually pursue something that is more exercise oriented even if it's YouTube videos like I'm doing if you can do that and have it exercise based then go for it or if it's teaching why not if it's competing go for it anything that would make you make your outcome more aligned with what you want to achieve 
Uh, I could never rest. I was always escaping. I never wanted to spend time at home, she says. Well, <laughs> vitamin D and exercise is, is good for you anyway. However, um, she says, after years of pushing her body and her mind to their maximum, Valerie became depressed, burned out, and in need of recuperation. She took four months off work to recover. Um, maybe find different work. And as I say, if she, if she found people who wanted the best for her, who understood and she seeks better crowds, I don't think it would have um, gotten to this level because then she wouldn't have been so isolated, she would have found people who were more akin to what she was looking for. Even if it's not necessarily best friends, but groups who are going for the same endeavour. So, good on you. So, I'd say what is exercise addiction, basically just when it um, is then bad for your health. And funnily enough, the BBC um, do create a distinction between men and women. So, symptoms of over-exercising include injuries such as stress fractures, tendonitis, and a low immune system. Women are at risk of what's known as the female athlete triad, which includes loss of menstruation, osteoporosis, and eating disorders. For men, intense exercise has been shown to decrease libido, uh, overtraining for those buff dudes or <laughs> who like to sit and listen to my videos. Hmm, maybe not them. Yes, they, they do draw a distinction. Um, funnily enough, what they've mentioned about over-exercise is, is very similar to, to vegan diets, but I'm sure there's no <laughs> causation there whatsoever. So, moving on, they mentioned withdrawal symptoms. I feel really anxious when I can't train, I can't sleep, I get headaches. A day when I haven't been out exercising feels like I've been in prison, trapped. Well, I, I, I recommend exercising every day anyway. And then it becomes, why do you want to exercise? What is your goal? And if you know why you're doing it, and you're, you're trying to achieve it, then go for it. I think it's very difficult for that to become an addiction. And even if it does, if that's something that is not harming any other people, and making you happiest in the long run, in fact might even be better for other people, then go for it, even if it kills you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, even if it's bad for you. If it's for the betterment of, of other people, or at least not to uh, be bad for them, and is what makes you truly happy, then go for it, because what's, what's better than living a fulfilled life, dying, doing what you love? Go for it, even if other people don't understand it, why not? So they do mention um, here where a uh, female coach saying that rest is important. And again, drawing uh, parallels from Dr. John B. Peterson's work, he has mentioned that people who tend to be workaholics, if they can persuade themselves to try and take at least a day off per fortnight, then even though they're working fewer hours, the amount of work they produce increases uh, significantly and substantially, even though they're working fewer hours because now that the, the work they're putting in is more efficient and more productive. So the, the same goes for you, but very few people are overworking. You don't really have to worry about that until a load of other people say, do you ever rest at all? So as always, let me know what you guys think down below. If you think that exercise addiction, where they say it affects 3% of people, is that really a problem? Um, or is it just needing to find a, a better crowd? Or am I actually encouraging bad behavior? Uh, whatever you guys think, please do let me know down in the uh, comments down below. Always looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. And as always, if you uh, have been watching this far, you might like to subscribe, like the video, help, help me out on the YouTube algorithm. And uh, thank you very much. I will see you next time.